Hi, and welcome to another episode of Badger Nerdworks Presents We Watched a Movie. I'm Brandon. And I'm Colin. And today we'll be talking about Pacific Rim 2 Uprising. Uh, we just got back from seeing it. Colin, your thoughts? It was a pretty good film. Uh, the robots were a bit less weighty than the first Pacific Rim, a bit more anime, but they even showed a Gundam Unicorn in one shot. The big statue of Gundam Unicorn. Which is kind of weird for that universe, but right, still a cool right. shout out. Right. No, I agree. Um, this movie is very cool. Uh, I agree in comparison to the first Pacific Rim. It has a big stylistic change. Like, clearly Guiller- uh, Guillermo uh, <laughs> is not in charge of this one. Yeah. Uh, it's more of like just a big budget action movie, and it just... Fires and on cylinders. Giant robots and kaiju, and they fight. <laughs> right, right. So it's a little less stylized, but it still has the style and feel of the first movie. But I agree, the robots are less weighty. Yeah. Like, in the first movie, you really felt the size and massiveness of the, the and combat. these ones just are more a fact of life. Right. Put in, but you also have a bit of world building in this one, even, which is interesting, with a bit of the... Uh, fallout of the previous film since it takes place 10 years later after yeah. they haven't had any kaiju attacks in 10 since years. Since they closed the uh, the breach at the end of the first movie. Yeah. Uh, and life has started to go on and they've started to rebuild the earth. But uh, this movie starts off really cool. Uh, the opening <laughs> sequence is awesome. Uh, it starts off with the people living in the destroyed part of the world that still hasn't rebuilt and yeah, uh, and some our of main the coastline char- cities yeah where... our main character uh is just kind of slumming it in like a half destroyed mansion right next to a giant kaiju corpse <laughs> right right which is pretty cool and there's become this kind of um yeah. barter system that people have developed for living in these zones like and it's like i'll trade you this bike for this bag of spices yeah yeah uh he <laughs> trades like a couple of different things he gets like yeah. some oreos the care uh the main <laughs> character who is he's finn like yeah. I-, I know he has he's... an actual name but he's finn from he's the star finn wars too. movies yeah. yeah and like the entire movie i know they say his name numerous times i don't remember i never him. catch what his name is in the movie he's the son of of the dead hero uh, pilot yeah, uh, from the first one and therefore brother of the uh, Asian super pilot that saves the world in the yeah. first one. Uh, Maku? Maku, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, like, it's pretty cool because, like, yeah. it jumps in with him and he is uh, broken away from his family and he's just going to go off and live his own life and he's making these, a bunch of these funny trades and living <laughs> in the, uh, the destroyed zone, including uh, trading a, a car for, like, a case of sriracha, <laughs> which which is hilarious and adorable. He's like, mm, mm, sriracha. sriracha. Yeah. yeah. And then it uh, takes him to, like, you know... He trades weapons for something at one point, I think. Yeah, he yeah. gets, like, a, he trades, like, a box of cereal for some Oreos. Because he's like, mmm, Oreos. <laughs> but then the movie really kicks off with him stealing uh, Jaeger parts. Because Jaegers have become, like, a global fascination. And there's all kinds of people that want Jaeger tech. And because there's a bunch of old, trashed Jaegers from the war... Some people are gathering parts to build their own Jaeger, and bootleg Jaegers are super illegal. Yeah, yeah, they're super illegal. So you gotta go in and get a bunch of decommissioned parts, which are under, like, military surveillance. Which is where the movie starts off. Uh, Finn's helping a group of criminals. We assume they're criminals, because they have guns and they're stealing stuff. Yeah. steal like parts out of this old Jaeger uh and it turns out he has a lot of skill because he was being trained to be a Jaeger pilot he is he a also ranger. is indebted to those criminals apparently and they're threatening well, to he, kill him he, no he screwed over other criminals so they don't trust him true <laughs> so that's how that that's how that worked out uh, that, yeah. that was my that was my understanding of it but yeah, I think so he also screwed them over once or twice. It's possible. It's possible. But uh, this little girl beats him to the punch, stealing the plasma core he needs. Which is interesting because when I first saw that character, I thought it was like an old homeless man. <laughs> Your first three daughters. She was all bundled up in like several layers of Well, in which case clothes. they very yeah. nimbly... Uh... To not identify that person <laughs> right uh, but it turns out she needs the plasma core because she's building her own little mini one person jaeger which was pretty cool yeah that one person jaeger was pretty awesome i think she called it scrapper yeah yeah, yeah. scrapper because it's made out of scrap get that <laughs> she's 
She's and it's, it's small enough to little drift with only fighter. one person. Yeah, yeah. So that's which, a thing. Which leads to the first time you see a actual Jaeger in this movie. Uh, when uh, the script... They, the, yeah, uh, Scrapper's only in. about like a bit higher than the foot of that Jaeger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, the, uh, the authorities Jaeger. try and like crack down on him. It leads to a really cool chase scene between an actual Jaeger and the itty bitty one. And it leads to uh, the main character... Uh, and uh, this girl getting sucked into the Jaeger program because they need more Jaeger. They got arrested, and they were like, jail or Jaeger program because you're both very skilled. (laughs) Yeah, and they're both drift compatible, which is still a thing. But that comes to what this movie really is about, which is, like, drone technology. Yeah. Because as much as this movie's like, oh, giant kaju uh whatnot it has like one of those things where it wants to say something about something so it's like drones are they a good idea or are they a bad idea and because it's so hard to have a bunch of jaegers everywhere it'd be way easier to have just a bunch of of drones yeah a bunch of drone jaegers that you could just have a few pilots you know operate remotely and, like, that brings us into, like, the main push. The benefit push of, this of their drones that they push is that you don't need drift-compatible uh, pilots because you just need one pilot for the drones. And yeah. And they don't have to be on site. And that brings back in the uh, the Charlie Which Day character. Thing. Who is yeah. one of the highlights of this movie. Oh, Easily. Charlie Day destroys in these movies. And he is fantastic oh, in this. I love him as the kaiju fanatic. Yeah, yeah. He plays That's the so kaiju fun. fanatic who helped by drifting with a kaiju in the last movie help save the world. Now in this one, he's helping the scary corporation build its drone uh, its drone Jaegers. Uh, and meanwhile, his old lab partner is still working with the Jaeger program to uh, help out pilots. And he's trying to work on a quicker deployment system with kaiju yeah. blood yeah. to use, like, rocket-deployed Jaegers. Yeah, because apparently kaiju blood is also rocket fuel. Or hmm, more that's... reactive than rocket fuel? Well, I mean, like super yeah. rocket fuel. Yeah, yeah, that's super rocket fuel. <laughs> Which is, like, a weird plot twist, but I yeah. guess they had to do something. They had to do something. And I feel like a lot of this movie... Uh, it kind of it was it was cool. It takes a few logic leaps from the original, right? Right. Yeah, to be like, and now this is what was always happening. Well, and it it feels like you know the Jaegers. It feels like in the first movie, the world was really poor, and like it was really hard for them to get their hands on resources. And in this movie, it just felt like resources were incredibly abundant for this world. Yeah, they really increased the resource stock of Earth in the second one. Yeah, they're able to just build so many Jaegers, because they're just, they don't even have the threat of Kaji anymore, but they just use Jaegers as defense force. Like, yeah. that's like their standard going to defense force. And this movie is totally Jaeger heavy and Kaju light. Like, yeah. there are not a lot of Kaju in this movie. With the exception of the final battle, there really aren't any Kaju. Like, yeah. they, they have this... They have a simulation for kaiju fights, but not real kaiju, because... Yeah, that's not the sealed. same thing. That's not yeah. the same thing. Like, you want to see I kaiju guess it's like Pacific ten Island. years later, so they've probably had time to actually acquire resources while in the original. It was like, we gotta build these now and acquire all the resources for them now. <laughs> right, right. So they've probably had a bit of time to breathe and actually gather stuff, but they still have way more than... There's any reasonable amount of resources for. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's kind of me- like almost short side though, because they make it real clear that a bunch of the world has not yet recovered from the Kaji War. So the idea yeah. that you would like put what would be the equivalent of an entire building or even a small city's budget into building something that's only good for fighting Kaju. Because it's not like, I don't know, I'd be kind of worried about a new breach opening. I'd be like, I want more. <laughs> right, I mean, like, clearly Even they... if I'm living in a slum, I want a new Jaeger, because a bunch Somewhere of them broke. <laughs> right, right. And if that happens again, and we have no Jaegers, we're doomed. <laughs> right, right. And they know that the uh, the bad guys are still out there, the, uh, yeah, what do they, they call them? Uh, precursors. Yeah, the precursors. Uh, they know they're still out there and they want to get back, so everyone is a little paranoid about it, but it seems like the resources should be more 
evenly spread. But th- that having yeah. been aside, the movie is a lot of fun. Yeah. It spends a lot of time with the young Jaeger pilots, uh, getting to know them, watching their training, which is kind of neat. And then uh, it's got like a corporate kind of evil corporate side yeah, where it's like that's a bit weird yeah but yeah so the of, good news is the drones were proven to always be a well-meant idea that was somewhat flawed yeah yeah and like just to get into it like there's some pretty cool twists in this movie like yeah. kind of spoiler but like yeah you you see some stuff you see a progression from the first movie's events and how they lead into this movie's events, and the stuff's pretty cool. We find out that uh, Charlie Day, who had uh, drifted with the Oh, we're doing that spoiler now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Like, okay. it's far enough yeah. in. Uh, so, Charlie Day had drifted with this Kaju brain in the first movie, and you're kind of like, okay, cool, that's it. He really liked Kaju. He kept the brain. He's been drifting with it. In Repeatedly. Fact, yeah, in <laughs> fact, he's married it. It's living with him as home. He has it in a big tube in his bedroom. Yeah. And that scene is probably the best part of this movie. Like, like at down. first it just seemed like disturbingly weird. Like, oh no, his wife has been captured or kidnapped or something and he hasn't noticed it yet. And then he sits down in his room that's all disheveled and you're like, oh no, there was a struggle. He's going to notice it any second. And then he's calm still, and then it turns and shows the kaiju brain, and you're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, he goes like, oh, no. oh yeah, baby. No, and yeah, he's, he's great. And because of that, he takes yeah. this turn from like, uh, good guy to bad guy, so you're like, oh yeah, we have this cool turn. Uh, he's the head of the, uh, the drone project, and it turns out that the artificial brain he's had to handle the neural load, which is why you always needed two pilots, uh, it functions off of, like, kaju. Like, he's been able to replicate kaju body parts, including yeah. their brains, and, like, put them into all the drones. So, like, you're, like, second so act... there are a bunch of kaiju brains in all the drones controlling yeah. them. Yeah, so, of course, right as they're about to deploy them, like, he activates all the brains and all the drones turn into, like, evil Jaeger drones. So yeah. there's a bunch of battles, but they're almost all Jaeger versus Jaeger. Like, for the first... All mutated Jaeger? Yeah, they're, yeah, like, they're like Jaegers. Mu- yeah, because, like, the Kaju stuff, like, grows super fast into them and they get spikes and stuff. But, like, to me, that's still a Jaeger. Yeah, that's just not like really a, bio a Kaju. Robot. And, like, if the two are the same, like, if yeah. any two are the same, it loses, like, the joy of watching, like, a Kaju fight, which yeah. is, like, all the Kaju are kind of different... With special abilities. That, and all the and all these drones ones, are just drones. Yeah, I mean, and they're, they're cool. They have missiles and bladed hands and spikes out their backs and stuff. Yeah. And because they get the heads up, they've managed to destroy all of the Jaegers. All the Jaegers. With the exception of, like, the one that's at... The, uh, then they repair, like, three no, or four more. they destroy more. all of them. <laughs> All of them except for uh, oh, the Oh, you meant the good Jaegers. I yeah, thought yeah. you were talking about the evil drone Jaegers. No, no, no. They match. Yeah, no. <laughs> and then it turns out the drones are able to open up the rifts. So they, like, open up a bunch of rifts, and you're like, oh, no, there's going to be a bunch of kaju, but only three get through, and, like... It is kind of cool when the one gets halfway through and gets split in half. Yeah, that is pretty cool. They show one king, like, crawling through the rift, and then the rift gets closed, and... It just cuts them in half. That was pretty sweet. That was pretty sweet. But no, so that leads to, like, you're, like, three kaju. And, like, being a big fan of kaju, I can't even really tell you what their descriptive, like, I kind of know what their powers were, but I'm not sure what they were supposed to represent. Like, the other kaju were clearly, like, kind of representative of a creature. Like, there'd be, like, a gorilla one. A pyramid head style face, but it had each section off, splits open. Right, but I mean, like, what is that? It had some sort of, like, kinetic absorption power, but it. Yeah, sure, that's what I'm saying. You can, like. Glossed over really quick. You you can, like, describe kind of some attributes to them, but, like, I didn't, like, immediately, like, that's the hammerhead one. Yeah. Or, like,. Oh, that's the big gorilla one, or that's the one that's like a bat, or it's like unfortunately less iconic cast. Yeah, and... yeah, I felt like the uh, yeah. the kaju just weren't nearly as cool, and like the end it... fight sequence with them was neat, I guess. It was cool that the kaiju got a transformation and combining sequence. Right, right. Uh, Charlie Thanks Day. To Charlie. Yeah, the Charlie Day character has like in his back pocket, I guess, a bunch of little ro- once again one of these things they did not describe. 
explain it all. He has a bunch of little robots that just bust out of nowhere. I thought in Tokyo. those were gonna just disassemble all of the Jaegers. Yeah, that seems like it would have been a better plan. Yeah. But instead they're like connector parts for the Kaju, so the three Kaju can become I was One like, oh, they're like kaiju? giant nano doctors. I thought that they were just repairing the kaiju at first. But no, they just they just no, they blend into them. one big un like six legged kaiju. But once again, I guess no that distinct works traits. with the world ender plan that they were going for this time. Right. Yeah, they wanted to put the giant kaiju into a volcano so that way it would explode and kill the world. Yeah, that's that that's turns out to be the evil plan. The, yeah, the 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 kaiju precursors are plan. super reactive. Yeah, because they have because they have rocket fuel blood. So if and you put a bunch of rocket fuel blood world. in or Mount Fuji, it. it will. Well, no, it like it'll, it's like a toxic cloud. No, it it was gonna activate the ring of fire. Like if you oh, put it man. in there, it would start the whole ring of fire up, and it would re terraform the planet for him. But that seems really weak. Like, I mean, that seems like a weak plan. Like, they probably yeah. could have, like, they couldn't pull that off the first time. Because, like, in the first Pacific Room, they said it took them, like, weeks to bring down the first Kaji. Yeah, I actually so, looked like, into that, and turns out that a path that the first Kaiju took, if it was headed to Mount Fuji, was actually the longest possible path there. Right, right. And it's like, you could have gone that way. Yeah, why are I'm gonna going to circle the globe? Yeah, go to... yeah. So, so there were a couple of kind of yeah. really big holes in this, this plot. Unless yeah. they changed their strategy, but they acted like this is what... The they enemy had always the beginning, wanted, so. which just makes the precursors terrible, terrible yeah. strategists, terrible. Strategists. It would make more sense if they had changed the strategy to that. Yeah, but they acted but like that was always always the plan, always the intended is, plan. Uh, but this movie has some weird plot holes like that, but mostly it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, there's a bunch of cool stuff. There's a couple of parts where, you're like, really, that you guys were able to pull that off yeah. in like a day or. Man, that's what the Kaji were there for? Like, yeah. But that having been said, a bunch of big robots punched a bunch of monsters in the face. Stuff blew up. Robots I was entertained. punched robots. I, I was entertained from the beginning to the end. It was entertaining. Uh, some drama gets glossed over, but there's yeah. drama too. Not a ton of style word performances. A bunch of forgettable stuff. But... Also if you some... want to see a giant robot punch a giant robot and punch a kaiju and smash some buildings on kaiju, Yeah, tons of collateral yeah. damage. If collateral damage is your thing, this movie is for you. It's like a disaster movie where everything's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching another episode of We Watched a Movie. I'm Brandon. And I'm Colin. Be sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. Uh, we love comments. We love comments. Hit the bell icon if you want notification of uh, new videos. Uh, and thanks for coming and watching. Have a good day. Peace.